this school is actually really unique because it um, came up as an idea after the destruction that came to this whole country and community from Cyclone Pam. So they basically had nothing left, you know, everything was raised to the ground. So by combining education with sustainability, uh, it actually fulfills, you know, the major needs of this community. So the other ways in, in which this school is, is unique and um, is that the building has been um, designed and constructed in such a way that uh, it meets all the requirements for um, cyclones proof you know, structures up to, I believe, category five, which is the highest um, standard out there. And in case of you know, any further cyclones or you know, problems like this, uh, it will be able to be a shelter for the local community. We've implemented water harvesting from the rooftops. The buildings has been designed um, and positioned in a way that uh, minimizes the use of energy to cool or to heat the site. There are plans to have solar panels and solar solar system to generate the energy needed. Um, and we are now in the process of building as well as recycling systems such as composting, composting toilets and uh, grey water systems. And we've been working together with this community uh, to help to achieve this, to achieve this goal that we have to move this to one and two. And like us, a brother family, we're very proud, so we give this land, especially to these type of projects. So now, Alhamdulillah, everyone now, they can feel the test. They, they test the flavor of Islam. Actually, every day in the morning when I wake up at six, the students are already here. That's an amazing thing apart from, apart from the other public schools. So it's just that they love the school. They walk very far to come, about some 10 kilometers, some five kilometers because they can see the importance of education. This morning you can see three kids, they come. This they walk over 10 kilometers. They are, they are smart on the road, rain, no umbrella. Um, they have to go down the cliff and it's slippery, but they still come. So before, before the kids were kids here in Dana, they learn about uh, education in the government. So sometimes, sometimes uh, they only know a little bit of uh, things. In, about the culture, but they come to join this, uh, this school, they arrive, the kids, the school, they understand so many things. They how they, they protect uh, themselves about the uh, clean, cleanliness, how to go to toilet and wash your hands. But before, they don't understand. If they go to toilet, come and take the food directly to the plate and they're eating. Sometimes they give the, the sick in the body. And from the beginning of the day, uh beginning of the first week of the class, I, I saw the students coming here with all different kinds of uh, 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 the things in them. Some have uh, a lot of lice and some have uh, infections. So schools have uh, had to run another program for lice treatment and uh, infection. I was myself really surprised the day we had the hygiene workshop how um, keen the dads were, because we divided the boys and girls, and the dads were there, you know, when I was explaining everything, and they were really engaged, they were asking questions, and they took their boys and, you know, washed their hair, and they ended up washing their own heads as well. It was actually a really great um, experience. The mothers are very happy about uh, what they have seen from our schools, and uh, also about the um, uh, what they have seen from inside the class that the, the kids they come in and they sit in a, in a good nice chairs and table. My grandfather here is a Baraman chief and we always want to preserve uh, uh, good character and respect and uh, with the system of education now uh, I, we can see this people or even the students and kids are drifting away from where they where our grandparents were there. So, um, you know, we're introducing or reintroducing in a bigger way than other schools around here a return to their traditions, to their dances, to their face painting, to their own traditional arts and crafts. 
and seeing how the community came, you know, the moms and the dads and the granddads, you know, coming to, you know, teach the boys and the girls how to sing and dance. That has just been so heartwarming. And, and you could just see the joy and you could feel it, you know, when they are here um, participating in that. If you can go to other primary schools, you can see how some like the, 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 stu the students likes to learn, likes to learn, but sometimes the parents have no support, enough support financially to support to be a, a slipper or a good pen or a good shirt. And most of the students were left out for this because they go to school, no support from parents because maybe parents don't have enough money. But with this, Alhamdulillah, there's a big chance. This uh, school, it's, uh, it's providing me job opportunity. I'm, uh, I'm getting employed and uh, uh, I'm, I think being a teacher in the classroom, it, it might uh, shape me in some areas as well. Like uh, it's motiv uh, motivate, motivate me and uh, it's helped me uh, to help my community. And also the students were very, very happy. Even the, some stay here up to half past four. They, they still want to learn, but the time is short. So the parents were happy that they were happy that the students will not only gain the education, but the students will have complete the satisfaction in terms that in some public schools they don't provide lunch. Some students go hungry and they don't really get a lot of attention when they are at school. But with the uh, the approach that we have in our school, we are implementing it right now. The parents are coming in, free will voluntarily, to cook for the students because they feel that providing service to the student is part of the offer to give to the school in return for what the school has given to them. And the mothers are very happy because the children also coming here, they, they used to have their lunch and they, the, the children also eating from our food crops or what we, we, are, we are producing here as in, in this school. As a Bema culture, they're doing the farming here for the kids and uh, we don't even use the, the foods from overseas. We only use our local, local fruits and, and, and also local crops that we get from our, from our, our garden here. So the food we are producing in the gardens um, is beyond organic. It's highly nutritious food. Um, no nasties, there's no chemicals uh, involved. And the systems that are producing the food is actually, are actually also producing fertility in the soil and sustaining, sustaining the soil we are harvesting from. This highly nutritious food is being taken to the kitchen and turned into a lunch meal that the kids um, that the kids have every day during the school year. Now, this is nutritious food leading to a healthy, healthy kids, healthy community, um, and hopefully the whole community will adopt these techniques and and use that um, in their in their families. But at the same time, we are hoping that. Um, to extend these gardens and extend these systems um, to provide for the school for years to come. We are not only teaching the syllabus, but we are teaching life skills that students would, whenever they go back, they can actually take responsibilities at home so that they can make an impact in the family. Traditionally, traditionally the way people garden and grow their own food in Tana is, uh, is based on slashing the forest and clearing the land, growing food, uh, taro, sweet potato, corn on that small plot. And over two, three years, they would use that fertility in the soil and then move on to a new, new plot. But now as the population is increasing, the access to land is limited. And slowly the land is losing its fertility. Um, which means the yields are going to be less, which means people are going to be relying on imported food, and this would have an impact on their health. 
The fact that they are in this unspoiled environment without distractions, without technology, without junk food, you know, um, there's something that um, makes them really pick up things really quickly and that's really rewarding because you can easily you know make a difference there, there are a number of systems that we um, we have implemented on the site um, to complement and uh, support the school uh, with with the sustainability uh, mission of the school um, we have alongside the gardens that are producing the the staple crops that are going to be used in the in the kitchen such as the taro and the cassava and the sweet potato we've got an annual vegetable garden which we are sitting in now which is designed in a way um, to uh, uh, help uh, sustain the fertility in the soil so we have alleys of of trees um, that are shading the, the beds that are growing the food at the same time they are producing food themselves these are there are bananas and papayas in these in these uh, alleys. So by combining education with sustainability, uh, it actually fulfills, you know, the major needs of this community. And it's a pilot project. And uh, the hope is that whilst you know helping the locals to develop their, you know, gardening and farming. Uh, according to their own customs, but adding, you know, the best practices that are available in permaculture and, you know, other more modern, um, sustainable farming practices, they will be able to become self-sufficient. And combining the idea of a school with permaculture is actually great because the kids will be learning um, the usual curriculum but at the same time they will be tending their own gardens and learning how to be um, reconnected to their land and how to develop it and um, you know to to sustain their own culture and sustain themselves as well so alhamdulillah on future time the the, uh, the kids the kids to become uh, healthy and the kids to become uh, like uh, they know everything, the knowledge to be open for everything. Like they know to how to make the current, to, to the current, how to protect your forest, how to protect your family, about the family. Yeah, they know, they learn so many things about the Pemagacha. They're very happy, Alhamdulillah. It's, it's a really unique opportunity. You know, you read about this stuff in, in books or in articles, but we are actually pioneering something here. These people are Muslims, um, but 20, 30 years ago, they were still, and some of them still living in huts, in grass skirts, some in some of the islands they haven't even met foreigners yet. So it's, um, yeah, it, it's really exciting. And I think that it should be um, the beauty and the uniqueness of it, you know, should be shared with other people back home. And I think they would greatly benefit from it. So during my involvement in this project, I've, uh, I've made a lot of friendships, uh, lifelong friendships, and I also probably have now an extended family in Tana um, that I always look forward to come back and visit. And the, the, sat the satisfaction that we get from, from actually just seeing the kids, um, just climbing the trees that I planted two years ago and harvesting, just even the simplest things like pigeon pea and just having a healthy, a healthy source of protein, um, which was put in um, through the efforts um, of a lot of people and now is actually fruiting in giving this nutrition and giving this sustainability for the community is something that drives me to do more of, more of this work and uh, just fills our, fills our heart with, uh, with satisfaction. So we are bringing the representative from the government from the provincial level and from the chief council and from the tribe councils from the tribe councils and also the every primary school headmasters they really want to come here and visit us in the tribal uh, meanwhile we have all the furnitures for the classroom but as we move up to the next next year level that's year three and year four we needed more chairs and more tables the stationaries and 
teachers, the teaching teachers, to recruit, but otherwise on behalf of me as the principal of the school, I'm so grateful for the donors who have sincerely donated to build the school. I believe in my heart, as well as the community, they're so grateful about what we have. They are unexpected. Even I've spoken to the family who have Apurotman uh, and uh, the family here. It's been like a dream, dream come true in their lives. And for me, uh, it's been so massive. I cannot express from my heart. And thank you so much. And we believe that as we go on, Allah will continue to bless us as we move on mightily to help to uphold the faith and the belief as well as uh, the teaching to the students to prepare them for their communities as well for Isle's place for the better.